Hi, welcome to this session. Today, I'm going to talk about how to mimic logic gates using MP neuron. By the end of this session, you are going to learn the basics of logic gates, including the basic gates such as AND, OR, and NOT, as well as the derived logic gates such as NAND, XOR, and IMPLY. The central piece of this session is how to emulate basic logic gates using MP neuron. I will begin with the two input AND and OR gates, and then extend them to three input and N input cases. You will see the different settings of the threshold for the MP neuron will lead to the different logic gates representation. Finally, I will also show you the graphical interpretation of the AND and OR gates, from which you can gain more intuitions for finding the proper rate threshold settings for MP neuron representation. In the last session, we illustrated a real-world application of MP neuron. Tom wants to make a decision whether to live in Hawaii based on several factors. All the inputs and output in this example are binary values. One for yes and zero for no. The decision-making elements that process binary values can be represented by logic gates. This is a generic logic gate diagram. The decision-making element is the logic gate, which is a Boolean function. The decision to logic gate is a single output which takes value 1 or 0. The inputs to the logic gate can be single or multiple values. We can see from the logic gate that the output changes for every input combination. There are a variety of logic gates. The most fundamental ones are AND, OR, and NOT. The symbols for these logic gates are as follows. The intuitions behind the AND and OR gates come from logic circuits. For example, the AND gate represents a series circuit. The expression x1 and x2 equals y has the following meaning. The two inputs x1 and x2 correspond to the states of two switches in the circuit, one for switch off and zero for switch on. The output y corresponds to the state of a bulb. y is 1 when the bulb lights, otherwise 0. There are four possible inputs of the AND gate relating to its output. If x1 is 1 and x2 is 1, it means both switches are pressed. In this case, the bulb lights, implying that the output y is 1. If we change x1 to 0, that is, we switch x on, then the bulb is off, whose output is 0. Similarly, if we switch x1 off and switch x2 on, then the bulb is off. Finally, we switch on both x1 and x2. The output is off. The above process is recorded by a table, which shows how each possible input of the AND gate relates to its output. This table is called truth table, which can help us understand the behavior of the AND logic gate. In this example, there are two inputs, x1 and x2. Therefore, it will have four input combinations. If there are three inputs, there will be eight input combinations. Different logic gates will decide different output for each input. There are two broad categories for logic gates, basic gates and derived gates. The basic gates are the fundamental logical operations from which all the other logic gates can be derived. These basic operations include AND, OR, and NOT. For AND gate, 
only when all the inputs are ones, the output is one, otherwise zero. For all gate, as long as any input is one, the output is one. Unlike AND and OR gates that have two inputs, NOT gate takes only one input. The output is the complement of the input, which flips 1 to 0 and 0 to 1. NOT gate is a one-input gate. Using AND, OR and NOT gates, other gates can be derived, such as NAND, XOR, and IMPLY. Let me explain NAND and XOR gates a bit more. For NAND gate, I will use an example to show the intuition of its truth table. Consider a chemical factory where the exhaust fans help blow the pollutants out. Suppose there are two fans labeled as X1 and X2. When the fans work properly, their logic values are both ones. The output of these fans is linked to a NAND gate, which is followed by the alarm circuit. When both fans are working properly, the output of the NAND gate is zero, which disconnects itself from the alarm. When any fan fails, say X2 doesn't work now, the output of the NAND gate becomes one. Then, the circuit is connected to the alarm, and the buzzer fires. Any failures of other fans will lead to the same results. NAND gate is essentially the combination of the AND gate followed by a NOT gate. This can be seen from its truth table. Let's add a new column to compare the result of the AND gate. We can see the results of AND and NAND gate complement each other. Thus, NAND gate is also known as NOT AND gate. XOR gate is known as exclusive OR, which can be explained using a two-sided switch. In the room, the light switch is near the door, labeled as X1. If we enter the room and feel it dark, we can turn on light using the door side switch. There is another basin side switch, labeled as X2, for the same tube light, for easy accessibility. If we are washing, we could press the basin side switch to control the light. Both switches are connected to an XOR gate. Initially, both switches were off, and the light was off. Jane felt the room was dark, and turned on the basin side switch. Then, the light was on. After a while, Tom entered the room. He saw the light on, but didn't feel the room was so dark. So he pressed the door side switch, and then the light was off. However, Jane was still watching at that moment, and the sudden change of the light made her uncomfortable, and she pressed the basin side switch again. Then the light was on. The above process corresponds to the XOR truth table. Having gone through these logic gates, we are now ready to study how to use MP neuron to mimic them. Let's first look at NOT gate. We first write down the truth table of NOT gate. Based on this table, we are going to find the threshold theta for this NP neuron according to the process for its output prediction. We now analyze the truth table row by row. The first row shows when x is 0, y is 1. Since NOT gate has only one input x, thus x equals 0 implies the sum z is 0. y equals 1 implies the neuron fires. That is, z is above the threshold theta. This implies theta is less than or equal to zero. We can randomly pick up one theta within this range. Let's choose theta to be zero.
The second row shows that when x equals 1, y equals 0, this corresponds to the case show in orange color. That is, if any inhibitory input is 1, then the output y is 0. Therefore, we set x to be the inhibitory input. Consequently, the Rojas diagram of the NOT gate is as follows. Having obtained an NP neuron for the NOT gate, we next enumerate AND gate using NP neuron. AND operator can be rewritten as a Boolean function. These are the inputs. This is the output. The AND operator is rewritten as a function. For two input gates, the advantage of this new form is less obvious. However, for the gates with more than two inputs, this function form looks very concise. For example, for the three input AND gate, these are the inputs. This is the output. Note that the two AND operators can be rewritten using only a single AND function. Based on these function forms, we next use MP neuron to mimic them respectively. Let's first mimic the two input AND gate. The first step is to write the truth table for AND gate. Based on this table, our goal is to find the threshold theta. Note that when x1 is 1, y is not always 1. For example, y in the third row is 0. Thus, x1 is not an inhibitory input. For the same reason, x2 is not an inhibitory input either. Based on the fact that AND neuron fires only when all the inputs are once, we now analyze the truth table row by row. The first row shows that when x1 and x2 are once, y is 1. Here, x1 and x2 are once implies that the sum of x1 and x2 is 2. y is 1 implies that this neuron fires, that is, the sum is above the threshold theta, which indicates theta is less than or equal to 2. We write this scope of theta beside the first row. The second row shows if x1 and x2 are 0 and 1 respectively, then y is 0. This implies the sum of x1 and x2 is 1. y equals 0 means in this case this neuron doesn't fire, which implies the sum is less than theta. Thus, theta is larger than 1. We write this result beside case 2. The third row shows if x1 is 1 and x2 is 0, then y is 0. The result of this case is the same as case 2, because the sum of x1 and x2 is 1, which is smaller than theta. Therefore, theta is greater than 1. The last row says, if x1 and x2 are both zeros, then y is 0. The sum of x1 and x2 is 0, which is smaller than theta. Therefore, theta is larger than 0. Combining the above four cases, we can get the scope of theta which is between 1 and 2. We randomly choose a value within this scope. We choose theta as 2, which produces the following Rojas diagram. This MP neuron represents the AND gate with two inputs. We next extend this method to represent the AND gate with three inputs. The first step is writing the truth table. Since the number of inputs is 3, and each input may take 
zero or one values. There are two to the power of three, which is eight cases. To find an appropriate threshold theta for this neuron, we can discuss each case individually, as shown in our last example. However, we notice that among these eight cases, many of them are quite similar and can be merged to simplify our discussion. Thus, we first construct a new column which calculates the sum of x1, x2, and x3 for each case. Based on this result, we notice that the sum takes only four values. Let's analyze them one by one. When the sum is 3, this corresponds to the first row. In this case, y is 1, and the new row fires. Thus, the sum 3 is above the threshold theta. When the sum is 2, this corresponds to these three rows in orange. In these cases, y is 0, and the neuron doesn't fire. Thus, the sum 2 is below the threshold theta. Similarly, when the sum is 1, this corresponds to these three rows. In these cases, y is 0, and the neuron doesn't fire. Thus, the sum 1 is below the threshold theta. Lastly, when the sum is 0, this is the last row. In this case, y is 0, and the neuron never fires. Thus, the sum 0 is below the threshold theta. Now, we combine the scope of theta in all cases together, which gets the theta is between 2 and 3. We can randomly choose a value, say 3, for the theta. Thus, the Rojas diagram is derived. We now put the previous two results together in one slide. It is easy to observe. When end gate has two inputs, the threshold theta is 2. For three inputs, the theta is 3. We can readily verify that for n input end gate, the threshold theta is n. This is because the end neuron fires only when all the inputs are ones. That is to say, the output y equals 1 only when x1, x2, and xn are all ones, which implies that the sum of x1, x2, and xn is n, just reaching the threshold. Therefore, n input and gate can be represented in this way. Having learned the end gate, we next move to OR gate. The approach to implement OR gate with MP neuron is similar to that of the AND gate. Let's go over this approach again. We first write the truth table of the OR gate. Based on it, we are going to find an appropriate threshold theta. A key difference between OR gate and AND gate is that all neurons will fire as long as any input is 1. Now we are analyzing each case for the truth table of OR gate. The first row shows when x1 and x2 are 1s, the result y is 1. For the first row, we see that x1 and x2 are both 1s, implying the sum is 2. Since y is 1, it means that the neuron will fire. Thus, the sum 2 is above the threshold theta, indicating theta is less than or equal to 2. For the second row, x1 equals 0 and x2 equals 1, implying that the sum is 1. y is 1 means the neuron will fire. Thus, the sum 1 is above the threshold theta, which indicates 
theta is less than or equal to one. For the third row, the sum of x1 and x2 is also 1, and y is 1. Therefore, the result is the same as case 2, which is theta less than or equal to 1. For the last row, x1 plus x2 equals 0. y is 0 means the new wrong doesn't file. Thus, the sum 0 is below the threshold theta, indicating theta is greater than 0. Combining these results, we can get theta is between 0 and 1. Thus, we randomly choose a value, say 1, for theta. The resulting row histogram is derived. The two input OR gate can also be generalized to three input gate. The truth table for three input OR gate contains eight cases. To find an appropriate threshold, we first add x1, x2, and x3 together for each case and put the sum result in a new column. Based on the fact that all neuron fires when any input is 1, we now analyze the truth table case by case according to the sum values. When the sum is 3, this is related to the first row. In this case, y is 1 and the neuron fires. Thus, the sum 3 is above the threshold theta. When the sum is 2, it is related to these three rows. In these cases, y is 1 and the neuron fires. Thus, the sum 2 is above the theta. Similarly, when the sum is 1, it is related to these three rows. In these cases, y is 1 and the neuron fires. Thus, the sum 1 is above the theta. Lastly, when the sum is 0, it is related to the last row. In this case, y is 0 and the neuron doesn't file. Thus, the sum 0 is below the threshold theta. Putting these together produces the final scope for theta, which is between 0 and 1. We randomly select a value, say 1, for theta and get the following row has diagram. Comparing the above results, we see that no matter how many inputs, the threshold value for all gates is always 1. Actually, this result is true for any n input OR gate. This is because all neuron fires as long as any input is 1. That is, y equals 1 if x1 is 1 or x2 is 1 or xn is 1. This implies that the sum of x1, x2, and xn can reach the minimum value 1 to guarantee the firing of neuron. Thus, the threshold reaches 1. Comparing the results between OR and AND gates, we notice that the threshold for N neuron is the number of inputs, whereas the threshold for all neuron is always 1, regardless of how many inputs. For further clarification of the reason behind this phenomena, let me show you the graphical interpretations of the AND and OR gates. For ease of our presentation, let's focus on the gates with two inputs. Before diving into the graphical interpretations, let's first recap the equation of a straight line. In mathematics, we learn that, given the x and y intercepts, we can write the equation of a straight line. For example, if the given x intercept is a, and the y intercept is b, then the line equation is x over a plus y over b equals 1. If we change the equal sign here to larger than or equal to, then 
This inequality represents the blue region, which denotes all the data points at or above this line equation. If the given a and b are both equal to the same value theta, we can get a special case of the above result. Multiplying theta on both sides will produce the following equation: x plus y equals theta, which represents a line whose x and y intercepts are both theta. If we change the equal sign to larger than or equal to, then this inequality represents the blue region. Using this result, we now give the graphical interpretations of AND and OR gates. We first consider AND gate. Since the two input variable names are x1 and x2, we first construct a two-dimensional plane with x1 and x2 being axes. Then we represent all the data points in the truth table in this plane. For example, the first row denotes a data point in the plane whose x1 and x2 coordinates are 1 and 1. The point is labeled with 1. The second row denotes a data point whose x1 and x2 coordinates are 0 and 1 labeled with 0. Similarly, the third row is a 1 0 data point labeled with 0. And the last row is a 0, 0 data point labeled with 0. Then, determining a threshold theta for end neuron is equivalent to finding a line in this plane in the form of x plus y equals theta that can classify the four data points correctly into two categories, such that all the data points with green labels are within the positive region that is above or at this line. We see that when theta is 2, all the data points with green labels are inside the region, meaning that setting the threshold theta to 2 correctly classifies the four data points. In addition to 2, we can see when varying theta between 1 and 2, all the green labels are also within the positive blue region. This tells us Theta equals 2 is not the only solution for end neuron representation. We can also set theta to any other values between 1 and 2, say 1.5. However, if theta is below 1, say 0 0.5, we see the two data points with red labels are inside our region. This is not correct. Thus, Theta equals 0 0.5 is not an end neuron because the two data points are misclassified. Similarly, if theta is strictly above 2, say 2.5, we see the data point with green label is outside our region. This is also incorrect. Therefore, theta being 2.5 is not an end neuron. For the same idea, we next look at OR gate. We can represent its truth table as four data points in the two-dimensional plane. We see that when theta is 1, the three data points with green labels are all inside the region x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 1. Thus, theta being 1 is a feasible MP neuron for OR gate representation. Apart from 1, theta can also be any value between 0 and 1, because from the graphical interpretation, we can clearly see, with the line moving within this scope, the blue region correctly classifies these four data points. That's all for today's session. Thank you for your watching. Bye.